Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa and if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Today is Monday, so I am here with the new missing child's case. Today we're going to be talking about Melissa Lee Vernon. She disappeared and give me one second and I will tell you how to hear because, you know, I don't remember this stuff. Um, she's been missing since 1989, which is really crazy because I was born in 1988. So she was missing... She went missing a year after I was born, and ugh, it's just, ugh. Why? <laughs> so if you like my videos and, and you have any missing child case that you want me to talk about, let me know. Go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified today. I mean, when I upload on my new videos, I upload on Mondays and Friday. So, yeah. So, ho so let's go ahead and get started. So, like I said, Melissa went missing on December 3rd of 1989. Uh, she went missing from Virginia, Lord Turner. None family abduction. She was a female, white. Her date of birth is the 4th, 13th of 1984. She'll be 39 years old if she would be alive today. Five years old when she went missing. Her height and weight is 338 pounds. She was wearing pink hoodie jacket and navy blue article C J C penny sweater with red and blue pale sleeve, navy blue cuffs and yellow a plankin of the Sesame Street character Big Bird on the front, a red and blue plate cotton shirt, red tights, black panting leather shoes with gold bows. Photos of Melissa's coat, sweater and shirt are posted with this case summary. Maroon Honda Accord 4. Um, that's the vehicle that is associated with her case. A uh, Caucasian female, light brown hair, blue eyes. Melissa has burned scarred on her right forearm. And I'm getting this information uh, from this Shirley, the Shirley Project. So, not all my cases will be uh, coming from there, but some, most of them will be coming from there. So let's go ahead and get started. So Melissa was last seen in a holiday party in the Woodside apartment clubhouse at approximately 10 p.m. on December 3rd of 1989 in Lorton, Virginia. Her family resided in the apartment complex. Melissa and her mother were about to leave the party, but Melissa went to get some more potato chips before they left and was never seen again. There was apparently eight guests present at the party at the time. Um, sorry guys. Cable Daniel Huggins emerged a suspect in Melissa's case almost immediately. Photos of him are posted with this case summary. Huggs was employed in groundskeeper at Woodside Apartment at the time of Melissa's disappearance, and he worked um, there for only about two weeks. He was a guest at Melissa's family's party in the evening of her disappearance and had been sitting near her when she was last seen and left approximately the same time the child was discovered missing. He had a criminal record prior to Melissa's disappearance, but not violence or sexual offense. And basically, Gator looked at Hud for hugs right after Melissa's disappearance was discovered, but did not find him until 1 a.m. in the next day. He already put his party clothes in the washing machine. The FBI took blood, hair, and fiber evidence from Hush Maroon Honda and tested in forensic laboratory. The military found Melissa could be a source for the hair and the blood stains, which were found on some tissue in the car, but so could 40% of the general population. Further testing ruled out Melissa as source for the stain. However, rabbit hair found in the car matches Melissa's rabbit fur jacket, and there were many blue fibers that match her sweater and some red fiber consistent with her skirt. And that is, I think, one of the hardest things in some of these cases, especially at this time, because DNA wasn't as event as it is today. So even if you saw or matched something of a person, you can't tell if that's the same person because back then, blood was tested different than what it is today. So it's just DNA wasn't as good as it is now. Hutch was convicted of abducting Melissa within the intent to de defile in 1991 and sentenced to 50 years in prison. He has always maintained his innocence. Melissa's case, he was experimentally prisoner for most of his term and calculated con con enough good behavior credits to shorten his sentence. As a result, he was released from prison in August of 2019 after serving just 29 years of his sentence. 
Two other men were convicted of attempting to extort ransom money from Melissa's mother. Shortly after her daughter disappeared, the individuals were not connected to her actual ad abduction. Melissa has never has never been located. Foul play is suspect in her case due to the circumstances involved. And I will put all the information if you know anything about Melissa's case, if you know who took her, if y'all saw anything, no matter how small it is. Um, it's, when I investigated this case or when I was doing the research, it did not mention anything about her dad. So I don't know if her dad was a, was in her life, who was her dad, they didn't mention anything about him. Um, so I don't know what was the relationship with her and her dad and um, it was just her and her mom, so I'm guessing that that wasn't in, in her life at all. And if he was, he probably was in another state. They did not mention um, anything like that. So, like I said, if you know anything, please, please go ahead and call the number if you know anything. I will put the F, uh, Airfax County Sheriff Department and the Federal Bureau of an Investigation um, on the video. Below. So y'all have a great, great day and I will see y'all Friday with a new case.